Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Yucatan is up next on Rediscovered Movies. Hello, welcome to a new episode of Rediscovered Movies. I'm your host, I'm Fanella Malloy. So the film that I'll be discussing today is Yucatan. So Yucatan is a 2018 Spanish comedy film. It is directed and co-written by Daniel Monzon, who's known for films such as El Nino and Cell 211. The film is also co-written by Jorge Guericaivaria, who is known for the Oxford Murders. The film stars Luis Tosar, Juan Pero, and Stephanie Cayo. So the film is about two con artists. They compete against each other to steal millions from an old banker that he won in the lotto. So the film was released on August 31st, 2018 in theaters. It made over $5.7 million worldwide. It opened at number one with over $1.2 million. It beated films including Alpha and Incredibles 2. This is all in Spain. In terms of critical reception, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 55% critic score and a 56% audience score. At the time of this recording, it is streaming on Netflix, so check your local provider. All right, let's get into first discoveries. So I was looking through a bunch of movies on Netflix to watch, and then I came across this one. And then when I saw the trailer and read the premise, I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. So... This is the first time, like, I've watched a movie, like, for this podcast. So, to be honest, while watching the movie, I felt bored. Because, honestly, it was a waste of time because of the plot, which got ridiculous. The characters, for the most part, were either annoying or just stupid. And the runtime was a bit lengthy based on the premise of this movie. But I found it was nice that um, I recognized a few of the actors. So with the actor that plays Lucas, Luis Tosar, I recognize him from Miami Vice, which I covered in uh, this podcast, which you could check out. And the actor that played Kleiderman, uh, Rodrigo de la Serna, he was in the Motorcycle Diaries, which I saw a long, long, long time ago. And he's also in Money Heist, which I have not seen, but is definitely on my list in terms of shows to check out on Netflix. Okay, we could get into the highlight section. So I enjoyed the concept. So it reminded me of, I would say, Ocean's Eleven meets Rat Race or It's a Mad Mad World, basically on a ship in Spanish. Because I like, yeah, the the plot is essentially simple in regards to the concept. And I enjoyed like the love triangle between Lucas, Veronica, and Claterman. It reminded me of the love triangle between Danny, Terry, and Tess from Ocean's Eleven. Also, too, I like how it shows what it's like to be on a cruise ship. Now, I've never been on a cruise ship. Uh, full disclosure, but I imagine it'll be similar to what's happening in this movie, minus the schemes that is happening in the ship. Because uh, we see there's always entertainment happening, provided by either Claderman on the piano and Veronica with her dance numbers. And we see also various performances from the supporting characters. And there- also, too, with a ship, there's lots of food and drinks for people to enjoy. And, of course, you get to mingle with all the the guests and the crew members. So that was uh, fun to watch. And I hope someday to be on the cruise ship. And hopefully it's just as fun like they show in the movie. 
minus the con artists and schemes, obviously. The locations. Um, so with uh, the movie, it um, I believe they travel from Spain to Mexico, or it could be reversed. I don't remember. But we see like the various locations where the ship passes through, including Casablanca during the sequence when a couple, Marco and Chusa, they follow Veronica and Claterman into town, and then also too with Yucatan with the final act of this movie. I enjoyed that with Antonio, the uh, essentially the character that everyone's trying to scheme money from, he is essentially the only character in this movie that does not care about the money. Because in his mind... When you have more money, that results to more problems. And I love how essentially he enjoys the simple life as a baker and a family man. So he just wants to, you know, keep doing what he's doing as a baker while spending time with his family, even though some of the family members, particularly with the son-in-laws, get to his skin at times when he wants to just enjoy life. And his romance with Carmen is sweet, even though, not surprising, it turns out that she is a con artist, but it was just nice to see, like, a a very nice uh, person with Antonio, like, just living life on, on the ship without having to worry about a lot of things. And there's a scene in the movie I would say one of my favorite scenes or the favorite it's when Claterman, he sees uh, Lucas as uh, various people while he's uh, playing the piano. Cause this happens after he uh, runs into Lucas and feels threatened by his presence because of Lucas's past relationship with his wife, Veronica. And <laughs> clearly we see Lucas gets, uh, uh, into uh, Claterman's skin because he's like playing ferociously with the piano while trying to, you know, not raise suspicions from the crowd. And how that was shot was uh, hilarious as well. I enjoyed that scene. Another highlight is the fact that this movie takes place uh, in the year 2008 than with the present because as a crime film it was nice to see that here the characters don't rely on gadgets to um do their cons essentially so i really appreciate that the performances from the cast were were solid um there wasn't a lot of stand-up performances for me because i felt like everyone did a good job with this movie despite the material itself. The music choices were nice. I enjoyed the score by Roque Banos. And there's a moment in the movie when Lucas, he is performing with a ukulele. (laughs) And clearly with Claterman, he is jealous when Lucas is around Veronica. So I enjoy that moment too as a scene. And lastly, as a highlight, the production design and the costumes were on point, particularly when they have uh, the performances inside the ship. So an example will be like when Veronica first appears in the movie, we see her like dancing. It was just nice to see all like the the sets in the background. It's it's a very colorful uh, set inside the ship. So really enjoy that. Now, we need to get into the low light section. So we need to talk about the plot of this movie. So as I mentioned that this movie focuses on these con artists with Claterman, Lucas, and a bunch of people wanting to steal Antonio's money because he recently won a lottery that was $165 million, give or take. And... (laughs) It's just hard to keep track the way it's structured, like, ha- like you know, who's working with who or who's against each other because so much is happening. So it was just frustrating to see that, oh, it looks like everybody wants to steal his money. That's why, like, when it was revealed 
uh, Carmen is a con artist. I'm like, yeah, no surprise. I could have figured that from minute one. And it's set up that Lucas and Claterman are, are enemies because of Veronica. But then at some point when they are trying to scheme Antonio, when Antonio and uh, Lucas gets uh, captured, that Lucas is working with Claterman. And I'm like, what? Like, don't you guys hate each other because of Veronica for one? And that the fact that they are each other's competition, when that was revealed, that just did not make sense for me. And also, too, with Lucas and Veronica's relationship, uh, I had questions with that because we see Lucas, he mentions that he is in love with Veronica, but Veronica does not return that, but she does mention at some point that she still has feelings for Lucas. So I felt like that aspect could have been fleshed out more if because um if he is lucas is if lucas says that he's doing all this for love then why would he care about the money if he doesn't have veronica that just did not make sense for me and then yeah like the fact that um yeah, like with that relationship, I'm not surprised that um, they don't end up with each other. But it seems like when the final scene that Lucas still has feelings for Veronica, but we don't know if she has those same feelings at the end after all the events. So that was left unresolved. And the weird part is that Antonio, after when he's kidnapped with- Lucas, oh, he knew about the scheme this whole time. I'm like, what? Because I'm like wondering why didn't he do anything to stop it? I I don't know. It just felt anticlimactic with that. Just rolled my eyes when that happened. And (laughs) it gets weirder that, oh, he gets uh, Claterman and Lucas to kidnap him? to uh, fix his problem. So essentially with Antonio, as I mentioned, he doesn't care about the money. So, but then it's also mentioned that he wants to get rid of the monies to not be a target as a lottery winner. I mean, I get, you know, not, he doesn't want to be a target as a lottery winner, but if he really did not care about money, he could have gave it to charity instead of giving it to, Claterman and Lucas, because clearly they are the last two people that deserve that money for obvious reasons, because they're selfish <laughs> for one. And then the fact that they go through all these hurdles just to uh, get Antonio's money, it's mind blowing that Antonio's like, yeah, I'll give the money to you guys. Ridiculous. And I felt that with the characters, they're either obnoxious selfish or stupid i did not care about the characters at the end even though the movie wants to make it as if that we should care about them i obviously did not care about them because everybody is thinking about themselves and antonio's son-in-laws uh fede and ernesto were annoying and that's why i'm glad they were put off to the side for the most part and <laughs> Yeah, and but it's just hilarious that um, the movie wants us to care about these people. But I'm like, I could care less about anybody except for Antonio. But with his stuff towards the end, I'm just like, what is this? And the fact that Antonio. So after when Claterman and Lucas, they reject his kidnapping proposal but then decides oh let's kidnap the son-in-laws instead i'm like what like what is going on here so honestly like the writing was all over the place of this movie and i and the direction too 
to a degree. And lastly, as a point for a low light, the comedy, since it is a comedy, it just did not work for me because the comedy felt forced. Like they were trying to force the jokes, which did not land. It really felt like terrible SNL skits throughout this movie. Um, an example is with uh, Brendan, who um, is gay, but then marries uh, Antonio's daughter. Weird subplot. So he eats the eggs that were meant for Antonio, but then, <laughs> but then uh, obviously there's like a mix up, and then Brendan eats the food, and then throughout his dance performance, is farting. And it sounded like he was pooping on stage, which was disgusting. So, yeah, that the whole comedy bit did not work for me. Let's get into trivia. So, I could barely find anything for trivia, but from what I could find, so with the actress that plays Veronica Stephanie Cayo, this is her acting debut. And the last point for trivia is that this film was mostly filmed on board Paul Mentor Cruz's uh, MS Sovereign and on location in the ports where the ship docked on its route. So it traveled from Brazil to Spain. So it was not Mexico. It spent 22 days filming. The film crew of 100 members, they lived in the ship. The ship carried out its regular activities, real crew, and passengers appeared as extras. So that is quite fascinating. All right, lastly, should this movie be rediscovered? And I say absolutely not, because it was just unsatisfying as a comedy and as a crime film. And yeah, like, even though, like, it may look colorfully visually, with locations and all that stuff. I just wish that the material itself lived up to that. So disappointing. And it could have been better if it was just all contained like within the ship than having to go outside of the ship, particularly with the last act of the movie. But yeah, I think this movie needed several rewrites to at least have something more feasible. All right, that pretty much concludes this episode of the podcast. So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Linktree at Namfi Malloy. You can find the podcast on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Linktree at RD Movies Pod. On Spotify, you can answer the future question and poll and rate the podcast. For Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review and rate the podcast. You could submit questions, comments, or suggestions by email, which is rediscoveredmovies at gmail.com, or you can send a voice message on Spotify for podcasters slash RD Movies Pod to be featured on the after show, which will air after the season finale. And all the links to this stuff will be available in the description. So I want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of the podcast and catch you on the next one.